Hello, everyone, and welcome to the other Prince William podcast, a project of the Prince William Chamber of Commerce. I'm Michelle Davis Younger, mayor of the city of Manassas, and it is my honor and privilege to join you today on Love Day. Oh. We love, love, love you all, and thank you so much for, for tuning in with us. You look great in red. <laughs> thank you. I didn't I even think about that color, on Valentine's but, Day. Yes, you have to wear red and black on Valentine's Day. I am Bob Sweeney, <laughs> and I am the president and CEO of the Prince William Chamber of Commerce. And it's really appropriate we're here today because we love OmniRide. And we get to be with our uh, with our good friend, Bob Schneider, who's the president and CEO of OmniRide. And I really look forward to having this discussion. It's gonna be a lot more than just about buses, guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> so before we dive into talking about OmniRide, talk a little bit, Dr. Bob. I, I, is that bothering you when I not say Dr. Bob? Okay, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one that does. Not it. at all. And depending on how long you've known me, I'm also Dr. Bobby. So, uh So um, before we start talking about OmniRide, tell us a little bit about your background before you got involved in transportation. Um, this year in September will be 25 years wow. in transit, which means I will have been in transit more years than I wasn't. Okay. So I'm okay. approaching that yeah. point. But my origin story is I wanted to be a high school history teacher. Wow. I fell in love with history and the classroom and oh. got to graduate school, or I went to college and, and I looked around and I was like, this is kind of a cool place. So then I looked around and when there's graduate students, so I can do that and then I can be a professor. Oh. oh. So my whole goal was to be a professor of history or political science. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't decide until I got into my Civil War class. And I loved every bit of it till the bullets started flying and I just didn't care. I enjoyed the political side of it, um. the elections, the impact of, of war on society, mm -hmm. the issues surrounding the actual you know, issues of causation for the Civil War. So I was like, I'm a political scientist. So that's what inspired me. Went over the mountains from Western Carolina to the University of Tennessee to get my MPA, Master of Public Administration. Mm -hmm. And I did that because the, the rule is if you're gonna write a dissertation, don't waste a good research idea on a master's degree. <laughs> Save the good idea. Uh, but to get through that program, I had to have an internship. Okay. And the internship was with the mayor's office and the mayor's office oh. oversaw transit. Nice. So I'm a political scientist by trade. I expected to finish my degree, um, but I was doing good work in the mayor's office and the CEO of the transit system. Hey, you want to do something? I said, I'll do it for two years and then I quit. And I never quit. <laughs> and finished my PhD while working. Wow. Uh, multiple pr promotions. I was the chief operating officer when I finished my doctorate mm. in political science, mm. studying the relationship between transit CEOs and board members in transit systems. So kind of um, like a national expert in how boards are organized, develop, okay. design, even nonprofit, but mainly public authorities, especially transit authorities. Okay. And so like I thought I was gonna go be a professor and I saw what they make. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> and, uh, kinda, yeah. You know, and we had two young daughters, so I'm like, mm. I can make a career out of this, figure this out, mm. and I figured out also that I can also teach. Yeah. Right, I can yeah. do things in the community. Yeah. So yeah. it's I don't have to be just a transit CEO. I can be all those things. Mm -hmm. So by being all those things, I really get a very fulfilled life. All right? yeah. That's what I love is about doing this job is it's about community. It's not about transit alone. It's all the other pieces, right. Right. which is, again, political science, it's government, it's policy, it's social impact, it's all those different kinds of things wrapped into one. And you get to work with great mayors. Great mayors, <laughs> great mayors, <laughs> great chambers. Always helps. Yes. <laughs> and other CEOs, I, I, yeah. Obviously you could run a chamber because uh, we live parallel lives. Um, first of all, I grew up Bobby also. I didn't know that you did. You have That's, the same initials. It's, it's ridiculous. Yes. I went to school to be a history major oh because God. I wanted to work in a museum. It was my goal to be a curator of a museum. And um, I had a double major at West Virginia University History and Philosophy. Um, and you know, I thought the same thing when I got my first job at the, uh, I was doing African American history at um, Gadsby's Tavern Museum in Old Town Alexandria. Okay. And um, I was like, Oh my God, this $7 an hour is going to get me nowhere. <laughs> and so it's very oh. funny that we live these parallel students, existences. Student loans are dream yeah. killers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Student yeah. loans are dream yeah, that'll killers. Do it. That'll that's do okay. it. So. so we are super excited to be here. Yes. 
You're the very first um, CEO I met when I took my job. Well, wow. the first person I came out to meet in mm -hmm. your offices. I don't know if you remember it, but we were sitting opposite seats. You were here, I was there. I walked back to your office with you, and um, because you had an emergency call, but it wasn't an emergency, you didn't know it was an emergency. You just kind of said, I got a call, I got to take. We walked back to your office. It was one of your dispatchers calling you because she was on the bus with the mayor's mother. This mayor's oh, mother. Was it, oh, it was me. Oh, wow. And, and I was like, it. Was oh my God, I'm not supposed to be here for this conversation. <laughs> oh my God. Was that the like accident at yeah. the dialysis center? When that lady um, ran into the back of her? Because I was there. I, it, no, it no. was the passing of your husband. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was oh, that, that awful, terrible, that very one. bad. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that day. Day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And, um, gotcha. And so, yeah. but during funeral. that conversation, and I think it's like that, like big, <laughs> bold news. You being the CEO of a transportation company that runs big buses, Down. and all you were talking about was a little two-wheeled motorcycle <laughs> that you were dying to go get on. <laughs> and so I am really, really curious. Yeah. And, and your history background makes you a great storyteller, and so I'm like totally infatuated with the whole thing, you know, the whole nine yards. And I would love for you to tell us a story of, um, Really, your favorite time on the bike, on when you're kind of just out there, it's you're by yourself, right? And you are traveling yeah. across, I think, country, maybe even, yes. or big, big trips. Yes. Uh, tell us about one. Or um, My favorite that I've ever taken uh, was the first trip I ever took really by myself for a couple of days. I would taken the bike to a conference, but one day on the bike, mm -hmm. you're staying at a hotel, mm -hmm. you're doing professional work. This one was, family was out of town, I would, all my meetings got canceled, and I would look at an empty calendar, and I'm like, I got vacation days, let's yeah. go. Yeah. And I had no idea where to go. When I yeah. say I have no idea where to go, I have no idea where to go. And I was like, hmm. well, your goal is to visit all the, the president's no. grave sites. Okay. And I was missing mm. uh, the two, uh, Nixon and Reagan in California, and the and 14 on Eastern Seaboard. So I got on my bike, called my best friend, and said, can you put me up tomorrow night? And he goes, sure. Boom, I was in Cleveland the next day. So from Columbia, South Carolina, to through to Cleveland, then the next morning, got up and um, ended up in Grand Rapids, Michigan to see Gerald Ford. Then I was in Canada, spent the night in Canada in some Airbnb. So stayed in people's houses and Airbnbs along the way. Soon I found myself crossing Niagara Falls into Vermont, stayed wow. at some oddball wow. lady's house. <laughs> and very nice. And 14 presidents, set, it took me seven days, 14 presidents, and 3,500 miles. And it was just me wow. by myself. Wow. I got head in a swivel, hadn't been to New England before, had not, I, I took a motorcycle through downtown Manhattan by accident. So Ooh. it's like, it's yeah, 100 that degrees, an yeah. that, and it's like, but your head's on a swivel. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, just yeah. a very different yeah. experience. And yeah. that, it's so memorable because I saw so many different places. Yes, I crossed into Canada. It's like, oh, that's not really different. Yes, it is. It is. It's very different. Mm -hmm. um, it's different culturally. It's different socially. But to be in Columbia, South Carolina, and two days later, you're sleeping in Canada. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it, it's, well, and it's I apart. crossed through coal country. I crossed through Mennonite country. Um, I got gas and then had to wait for a horse and buggy to pass me yeah, in Lancaster, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. So you saw a lot of yeah. different things on that that's trip. That's so cool. That's so and cool. And to have it all crammed in. Um, our, whether it's Arlington National Cemetery yeah. or Mount Vernon yeah. or um, a, you know, uh, Calvin Coolidge whose family estate is in the cheese farm. Wow, nice. So, nice. yeah, so it's a dairy. Wow. And so to see all that different was just a lot of fun. So, you know, I ride a motorcycle too. A lot of people know. don't know that. And so um, I'm, I haven't been on in a while, but I, right. I have my motorcycle license. And so I share that love because I know what it is to just get on that thing and go and let your mind just be free and ride. It is it is absolutely invigorating to be able to do that. I've never done a trip that far, but I think the farthest I've been is Pennsylvania. We went, we did a run up, up there, been to Virginia Beach, and I was the only female in the group that was riding, so that was pretty badass, but we pretty good. Absolutely. <laughs> we're pretty good. So how has your love of travel had an impact on your vision for transportation? Because I know it has had to. Every great city has great transit. Yep. 
um, and every community has a different approach to it. One of the things, again, that political science background is yeah. You can go to every city, and every city structure is different. Mm -hmm. So you as a mayor know this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You go to Richmond, and you talk oh, to your, your colleagues that yes. are mayors of cities, yes. and they have, maybe they're a strong mayor, it's a weak mayor system, it's a, a council format, and even then, how they set up their council mm -hmm. districts may be different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take all those concepts of government and, and, and governance and put them into your utilities, mm -hmm. your road network, your libraries, your schools, and all that uniqueness shows up in transit. You also have different people have different needs. Is it a social service need? Is it a get to work need? Or is it a commuter need? Mm -hmm. You stack all those things in, it's how you share information. So it really reflects the people and it reflects the government mm -hmm. of that community. So when we travel, we purposely ride the bus. Wow. So um, you can see firsthand. Firsthand, yeah. how does Absolutely. it work? How does it look? Absolutely. How does it function? What do we get right? Um, Take a picture, send it to send it to a, a staff member. Hey, check this out. Here's a good idea. We were just down at Vaco in mm -hmm, Richmond, mm -hmm. on, yeah. walking around mm -hmm. just to get some fresh air. And the next morning, I took pictures of something cool that Richmond's transit system does that we might be able to take advantage of. So okay. what's nice is you can't ride our bus and Richmond's bus at the same time. Mm -hmm. So right. we, we share <laughs> yeah, ideas yeah, yeah. because there's no competition. Right. Imagine right. having that scenario where yeah. everyone gets to yeah. win yeah. when yeah. it works. Absolutely, that's great, awesome. That is great. I, um, I'm really fortunate to be in this year's class of Leadership Prince William and um, on our on our transportation day, we were out here visiting you, um, and we got to ride in a bus that I believe you spent $700,000 on four hours ago, or maybe it was 10 hours ago. It was some, it was, it the bus arrived. was, it had just, just happened. arrived. Wow. Never, not one other person had been on it yet. Can you share some ways that OmniRide has modernized and embraced technology and all of the services that it provides? Absolutely. So we have just common sense technology of the bus. There are so many moving pieces. Mm -hmm. It is an unbelievable piece of machinery. We think cars are complex more wheels, the brake systems are on, I was a director of maintenance for a few years too, and I've le just learned so much in that process, but the actual bus, even though it's a diesel bus, is infinitely cleaner mm -hmm. than it was even 10 years ago. I think 20 years ago, it's way cleaner. So you're, you're already getting an environmental benefit of that technology. Yes, we're looking at electric vehicles, for example, um, we're, I'll cover that in just a minute for a smaller fleet, but those big buses allow us to take up to 57 cars off the road when they're full mm -hmm. because there's 57 passengers. Yeah. Every single gallon of gasoline emits 19.5 uh, cubic feet wow. of CO2. Wow. So if you drive and you burn one gallon of gas, so wow. if those 57 people, wow. that's wow. enough CO2 to fill up this room. Wow. So when you start to think about yeah, you technology think about that, right? and all those different things that becomes part of the equation. So that newer technology, by us having, we use ultra low sulfur diesel. The engines have particular traps to keep mm -hmm. um, the NOx and the, the, just the VOCs out of the atmosphere. We become a cleaner technology. But on top of that, we have mobile ticketing. You can track to see where your bus is or what time it's coming. Don't I know we, those, so there's all those different things that we, we bring into the Love workplace. It. Love it. In addition, we have safety and security components that we can track where that bus is, but we can also peek in in real time. So if something's going on, PD can actually see what's happening inside the vehicle. So we look at it from a safety mm -hmm. and security standpoint. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it from a reliability standpoint. We're looking at it from a customer service standpoint. But technology is, is so important in transit because even 15 years ago, you didn't have an iPhone. So you were just you just walked to the bus stop and you stood there. Yeah. And you waited till the bus came and you left. Yeah. Well, once they put a phone in your hand, then you could call your yeah. friends to say, can I get a ride? Mm -hmm. Then when they put the tracker where you can order an Uber mm -hmm. or see where the nearest bike share is, mm -hmm. our competition got a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So we have really struggled as an industry to advance that cause. And now we're starting to do much better, which makes OmniRide better. Yeah. And our tagline is get there smarter because there's so many different ways to do it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it the smart way. Mm. And we're that option okay. most of the time. Good, good, that's great. I know OmniRide and Keep Prince William Beautiful and Filigreen, shout out City of Manassas, Filigreen, have partnered um, to yes. work together on sustainability options. So I'd like to hear about the partnership like these and how they work together with OmniRide to improve the community. Yes. So how, how does all that work? It 
actually all happened at a chamber event. Oh, That's wow. That's kind That's of what so cool. inspired Yay, it. Um, you know, <laughs> I mentioned, you know, we're, we're in we're an environmentally conscious organization. We have our own mm -hmm. functioning internal green team. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of part of what inspired it. But you know, we're buying electric vehicles. We just placed our first order through the board last week. So shout out to uh, City of Manassas, Manassas Park, Prince William, who are helping to fund these vehicles so we can introduce uh, small and medium duty vehicles as EVs in the community. We'll have a great ribbon cutting. Wow. We'll yeah. do all those cool yeah. things. But with the filigree, happened we were at KO Distilling for okay. a chamber event okay. in the city of Manassas yeah. 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 and um, uh, it was it Michael Whitlock mm -hmm. who just mm -hmm. grabs yeah. people yes yes and he says, does that very well right, goes, you're an environmental here you're an environmental <laughs> leader have you heard of this business named filigree yes and I had just walked past it like three or four days yeah. before yeah. on my way right. to a meeting yeah and I was like I didn't know what it was mm -hmm. so he introduced us there you go. and he's like we sell environmentally conscious mm -hmm. products yep and so the whole idea was I have a green team. He's focused on a retail component. He's a small business. Mm -hmm. His customers, he wants them to be environmentally conscious. Mm -hmm. We are an environmentally conscious option and we run right in front of the store. So when we put all those things together, I said, we'll be in touch. Mm -hmm. And we took our green team over to the filigree mm -hmm. location mm -hmm. right about Christmas time. We even got Love Bomb by Santa nice. Claus when he came in hey. singing um, <laughs> carols. And uh, Key Prince William Beautiful is at the table too because right. we've had a partnership with them mm -hmm. in that we do art and transit. I love so it. part of, it's not just the environmental component, mm -hmm. but the theme has been mm -hmm. environmentalism in, in communities. That's great. So we have That's freaking awesome. different shelters placed all over Manassas and Prince William County mm -hmm. done by local artists that reflect that concept of clean living, clean mm -hmm. cities, mm -hmm. clean environment. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, really wonderful partnership. Well, then... Last week, uh, the owner of Filigreen came over to our our facility and talked to our employees about sustainability okay. um, as a work as just a person in the city, mm -hmm. person living in the community. These are things that you can do. I think it was called imperfect sustainability. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do everything yeah. exactly the right, right way, and tra tra you know talk to our employees about what that impact can be. Mm -hmm. And now our, we have some other employees that are interested in, where's this filigree place? We, we, we yeah. want to go. Yeah. We want to shop there yeah. because it's done some inspiration. Okay. So that's a case where the chamber, you know, it's that chocolate and that peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah. And it, was, it, it fits together. the bill. Yeah, and that's great. awesome. That's it is great. beautiful. That's awesome. It's a beautiful story. It, it even goes further than you know. I, um, uh, so after you met with John and Rico the first time, I met with them. And I just ran into them randomly, and um, they pulled me aside and told me the, um, the partnership that you were doing. And now they have created a partnership so that Rico will have mobile vans that his people will be driving around with a refillery in the back of the van for John Hicks around the county to open up John's commercial side um, and help John um, kind of get the sustainability into uh, the commercial practice. And we have a brand new office, the chamber does, opening up, and we're gonna be his first customer. So it's, a, it's automatic refill every, um, every, I think, month. He swings by and refills our sub dispensers and with all sustainability products. It's beautiful. And it's, it's really because, honestly, you encouraged him. It, it, that's what happened. And so now he's really right. focused on his other side well, of the And again, the hero in the story is Michael Whitlock. Who yeah, basically. <laughs> here, right? here, here, here. The hero in the story is always Michael yeah. Whitlock. It's so the October or November it's, meeting. Yeah, he just said, is, you guys both Michael care about Willock. this. And next thing you know, here we are. I'm telling you, that's so awesome. So. Prior, I've never used this word in a sentence in my entire life, but I'm about to. <laughs> okay. The word is Idaho. <laughs> uh, and nobody uses the word Idaho in a sentence, but prior to your position with Om Omnira, you worked in Idaho and South Carolina, I believe. Yes. And after working in all these different sectors and parts of the industry, what do you think the biggest challenge is in transportation in 2024? The willingness to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We pay for our highways based off a of gas tax. We pay for transit based off a of gas tax. Yeah. We pay for, we, we, we don't run the postal service off just stamps anymore, right? You fund your education with complex and different formulas, but in almost every, at the federal level, there's a federal gas tax, which barely increases. Uh, when I was in South Carolina, they hadn't moved the gas tax in 25 years. Wow. Uh, a total, 
of four million dollars. So let me get this number right. It was one million dollars for the entire state of South Carolina for mass transit funding, and there were four million people. Wow. No, I got it wrong. It was two. No, no. Here's why. It was two million dollars for four million people because it was fifty cents per man, woman, and child. Mm. Was the, was the amount of money they were willing to give for transit wow. for the whole state. So it really now fell in localities. But then the state likes to control, for example, what can localities raise for taxes. So again, people ask what's a PhD in political science doing studying the transit right. system. Those exact things. And so we have the same scenario. Each time the state adjusts the gas tax, you, you can get more done, but it only goes so far. Right. And so what we have a willingness to do is We'll build a Taj Mahal garage. We'll have pretty decorative driveways, uh, beautiful, amazing cars. People will pick the car based exclusively on the color. They'll spend $72,000 on a new vehicle without really even thinking about mm -hmm. it. But then we won't turn around and do the, the transit, mm -hmm. which helps the people that, that's your phlebotomist, that's mm -hmm. your barista, mm -hmm. that's your home healthcare worker mm -hmm. that's getting access, mm -hmm. that's senior citizens mm -hmm. who just can't drive anymore. Or one of my favorite customers I had when I was in South Carolina, uh, she was a practicing nurse, but she had epilepsy. And mm -hmm. so she was not allowed to have a driver's license. Right. But, had to get but how does she get That's to her right. job treating she people? Had to get there. And so she worked at the VA. Wow. So we were her connection between mm -hmm. her community and helping veterans, but because she had epilepsy, if we didn't have that service for her, think of the veterans that are impacted. So we don't think we don't think about it, but I can assure you there's one at least one other person besides me that you that you've crossed in your day that has had their lives touched by transportation or transit. You had it touched very badly on 234 jammed traffic. So yeah. speaking, I of, I was on a bus. speaking but, of but pain, yeah. but like when one bus goes through one intersection, mm. that's like 57 cars going through the blink yeah. of an eye. Yeah. So we don't think about right. it that no. way. No. But if we I never you know, would. Right. Yeah. If you've been to Europe and we everyone says, Oh, I go to Europe and New York City, well of course you're on vacation. You didn't bring your car. Right. But if I knocked your car keys out of your hand yeah. and you had to get around, you would suddenly be a lot more interested in funding mass transit. Yeah. And wow. so that's, that's a big part of you know, those different challenges. Mm -hmm. What I can say mm -hmm. is what's so different about every other place I've worked is no one questions the need for mass transit here. Mm -hmm. The traffic's bad. Mm -hmm. Right, the city, mm -hmm. the, the community is growing. City of Manassas, mm -hmm. Manassas Park, mm -hmm. Prince William County. Mm -hmm. There's no question whether we need it. Yeah. It now just comes down to how much do we want to pay for it. Right, and right. that's one of those. That's what the big challenge is. Right. We were fortunate pre-pandemic, and we made a lot of money off the commuter services that helped offset some of those expenses. What's shifted is now our local services are booming, and you can tell by the amount of development in the city, that in the county, et cetera. All those businesses are now keeping our workers home. So they don't have to go all the way into DC for that job. They don't right. have to go to Fairfax. Right. They get the right. job here. Right. Well now they need transportation options to get from Woodbridge because they don't want to they don't want to commute fifty minutes each way in the morning. Right. So that's what we're having to look at is how do we now have for the first time cross county consistent connections mm -hmm. to reduce traffic, to get job access, to build economic development, and do all those things. We have shifted from being that commuter service to Part of part of the economic engine. Nice, beautiful. So the traffic we know in, in Northern Virginia. I love congested. Love it. it congested. Helps, it helps us. <laughs> well, we try to get over here today, <laughs> and so um, alternative transportation is definitely important. But talk a little bit about how Omni Ride is adding additional routes, um, route additions, and going forward. What are you, so what are you working on? Right. Uh, this past. Two years, our focus has been on two things. Number mm -hmm. one, introducing a service called Microtransit. Mm -hmm. Microtransit is an Uber provided by us. It's mm -hmm. our employee, our vehicle, and there's an app for that. Okay. And so <laughs> if you, we just put it in a geographic dedicated zone. And the reason we did that is we had routes that weren't performing that well. Mm -hmm. Before the pandemic, we did a reshuffle of the services in Manassas, Manassas Park, mm -hmm. and Prince William County. and. We did, we did such a good job that two of the routes siphoned off all the passengers, mm -hmm. and the passengers who were riding in the other area, we thought we could, we, let's get more access to more rooftops, let's mm -hmm. have a bigger zone. Because mm -hmm. when that bus goes down that road, mm -hmm. you're, you're now constrained by how far and how easy it is mm -hmm. to walk to that road. Right. But we're a very cul-de-sac -y community, mm -hmm. which makes it really hard to get around and, and mm -hmm. between. Mm -hmm. So we put that zone in, and now we serve more rooftops, more people. We don't have identical ridership, but we're actually serving different mm -hmm. people right. than we did before. So more nice. humans are being touched by nice. that. The Love success it. of that 
allowed us to then introduce, so that was a swap for productive for unproductive service. Mm -hmm. Well, we then took that model and took it to Dumfries. Okay. And so we now have a service that expands up in the Montclair community for the first okay. time. Okay. So now we have a micro transit zone that allows you to get from town of Quantico, Fuller Heights, Triangle, Dumfries, and connects all of that for okay. the first time. That's great. What's important with these zones is they connect to fixed routes. Mm -hmm. So they connect to downtown Manassas so you can then ju jump on the bus That's and get great. a bashed in. That's awesome. And you can jump on the bus and get her to Liberia. Or you can go to Eastern Prince William. Yeah. Or go to Tyson's if you're in Manassas. You can go to Tyson's, right. exactly. Yeah. So you have all these different options really that hmm. you didn't have before. Right. And right. the same thing is on the eastern side of the county where we once we connect you in, in Dumfries, mm -hmm. you don't have access to all of Eastern Prince William, no, including no. access to VRE and access right. to the metro station. Right. Right. So it really does change the game yeah, into great. how you can get around. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Wow. So if you could give, this is the old man, Dr. Bob question. Okay. <laughs> if you could give any advice to someone who uh, wanted to start a career in transportation, what would that be? Study what you love and then go to work in transportation mm -hmm. because we are an industry that my boss got his degree from UVA in um, chemistry. Wow. 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 Um, <laughs> my other boss, he got his job in marketing and thought he was gonna go to Madison Avenue. Uh, another one of my friends is a political scientist. He was gonna be a, a, a football teacher. So he studied political science because he thought it would be easy and he could be basically yeah. Then go be the, the like a baseball coach or a football wow. coach, whatever it was. Our industry is littered with people who did something else. Yeah. But what that means is you have value in something you love and you have an education right. and a passion. Right. So if you studied art, we have a home for you because yeah. you can learn our industry. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is a, a, an instance where it's very complex. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, you, if you have something you love and you care about and you have that knowledge, you bring in a level of energy mm -hmm. and a vision that... We, that other organizations might not have. Wow. And the other thing that I would just share to anyone is like, it's not just, it's transit is that part of it, but it's always interesting. There is never a day that is the same. Some days That's make great. you want to yeah. cry. Oh yeah. Some days make you want to jump up and down like you won the gold medal in women's gymnastics. Mm -hmm. um, other times mm -hmm. it's just flat. And th th but even those days mm -hmm. are interesting. Yeah. They're interesting. Yeah. The conversations, yeah. the emails, the topics, yeah. the subjects, yeah. the phone calls you get. Whether you're, you can spend an hour studying what's going on in Richmond, mm -hmm. or you can study electric vehicles and mm -hmm. what what's going on with emissions issues. You can go as far as you want to in terms of keeping yourself engaged, active, and interested based on what you love. That's great. That's awesome. Good advice. So before we wrap it up, I heard you're an avid music lover. I am. What is a song that you would suggest is your favorite? My favorite song for Valentine's Day. This is my second okay, favorite song. We'll go with that. Of, well, this is my second favorite song of all time. <laughs> okay. So it's right there. Okay. My favorite song is Rosalita by Bruce Springsteen. I just okay. love it. Okay. I fell in love with it when I was a kid. I don't know why. And I just, <laughs> just still love is. it. <laughs> but the second song that I love, it's Lil Darlin by the Count Basie Orchestra. Okay. It is gorgeous. All right. It is beautiful. Good. It is haunting. We'll have to check um, that out. I was a musician in high school and I played bass and I oh, love it. Nice. You can hear every instrument. You can hear exactly what jazz should sound okay. like. It, it's that's and it's a great song for Valentine's Day. Awesome. Little Darwin. That's awesome. Great. Thanks for that. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us today. We would encourage you to stay connected by following the other Prince William podcast on your favorite podcast platforms listed in the description. And before we say goodbye, yes. I want to always remind you that we are going to keep supporting our local businesses and artists and entrepreneurs. But most importantly, we've been talking to Bob Schneider today, but he is supported by an amazing team. And there is one person in particular in this company I want on this podcast, and her name is Holly Morello. Yes. She is Go an Holly. amazing we rock love star. Holly. So thank you, thank you for everything. Yes, yes. And, oh, um, and personally. Bob, it was really nice. Really nice to, to be with you Wonderful. today. Personally, you know, I am just so <laughs> grateful to know you and what love, you love all and what you all have done um, in my family for my mom, you know, and we know she's on dialysis, has to take Omni Ride. I am your best spokesperson because I'm like, call Omni 
right. And now you've seen, I see you it. see the impact. I, uh, yes. Yeah. And so yes. when you magnify that yes. by thousands of people. Yes. I'm one. You and, are one. And I mean, you added the Saturday service and that I was running and ripping like crazy three times a week. She was spending $1,200 a month. And that saved that and having Omni Rat. So I'm I'm just grateful. I had to put that in because yeah, you know I'm grateful. I text the heck out of you when stuff <laughs> doesn't work. But 99 percent, they're great. On um, that's it. Thank you so much. My um, take care, everyone, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Other Prince William.